Christmas Eve. It's, it's the one night of the year when we all act a little nicer. We, we, we smile a little easier. We share a little more. For a couple of hours out of the whole year, we are the people that we always hoped we would be. Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today I'll be doing a review of the movie Scrooged, which I just saw for the first time a couple of days ago. It is indeed Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas to everyone. This likely will be the only video I do over the next couple of days as obviously I'll be celebrating Christmas with my new little family unit with baby Thor now a part of the family and also of course having family over this coming weekend and that is obviously going to have an impact. So Anyway, I wanted to say a Merry Christmas to everyone and also to do a Christmas movie review as it is indeed the reason for the season and tis the season and all that such. So let's go ahead and dive into it. This is a 1988 comedy Christmas film featuring a performance from Bill Murray, which I'm going to be totally, totally honest on. I was not really all that much of a fan of. I really do feel like the character was being pulled in different directions. There was times in which Bill Murray was very mean-spirited and, and, and kind of tried to play that evil character. And if you know anything about Bill Murray, he just doesn't play bad very good, right? He doesn't play a evil character very well, at least based on the films that I have seen him in. He's usually either the hero of the story, the good guy in the story, or somewhere in the middle, right? More of a conflicted character. With this one, especially in the very beginning of the movie, he's very clearly a very mean guy. And I I just didn't really buy it. It really always felt like Bill Murray was putting on a show and that he was acting, and I don't like when I can tell that an actor is acting. You know, you know the whole point of acting is so that it, it flows seamlessly and that you believe the character and you believe the emotions that you're seeing on screen. Where with this performance, I really honestly did feel like there was this tug of war going on, and I didn't really appreciate what was going on as far as his performance go, because when he had those more lighthearted uh, moments, he did very well, because that is the type of performance that Bill Murray is very good at. He's good at being able to play that every man, every day kind of, kind of character, and pull on the heartstrings because of it and when he did that he did it very well but when he tried to be mean and evil it just I don't know it just didn't feel right it felt artificial and based on uh, reviewing some of the information of the behind the scenes in the film apparently him and the director did not really get along all that well which is kind of much of the history of, of Bill Murray is him not getting along with people behind the scenes but it seems like they both had very different visions of what the character should be and so my guess is that what I was picking up on was the fact that there were two different characters trying to come out the one that Bill Murray wanted to put forward and then the one that Richard Donner wanted to put forward instead it's written by Mitch Glazer and Michael O'Donna, and this is actually a retelling of the classic 1843 novella A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, and it is, I think, a very on-the-nose interpretation, right? So there's very clearly the three ghosts, just like you have in the original story, but also you have moments where Bill Murray's character, who is a television producer, literally in the midst of putting on a production of A Christmas Carol, again, very on the nose with it, but even he at times is seeing what's going on around him with the ghost, and he's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute here, I know this, I know exactly what's going on, and I don't buy it for a second. And that creates some comedic elements in the film that I think are definitely worth mentioning. The film was actually made for around $32 million, which based on what that would have been, in 1988, comparing it to 2020 dollars, that's a very high budget film, especially for a comedic film, a comedic Christmas film. I feel like you would never even see that number for a modern day Christmas comedy film. You know, you would normally see less than that, even for what you would find in 2020 dollars, right? So if you just compare it, that's a lot of money. I would say what? That must be close to $100 million or so on that. And they don't really spend that kind of money on comedies in general anymore. And so I find that interesting. The film did make around $100 million worldwide wide at the box office, so it definitely was able to recoup on its investment and uh, it is a film that actually has garnered, really over time, more and more praise. It's actually fallen more so into this cult classic status, with many people considering it to be one of the greatest Christmas films ever made, many people also considering it to be an underrated Christmas movie, and also this cult Christmas classic. For me personally, I just really honestly did not like this dynamic going on with Bill Murray's character. To me, it very much distracted away from the film distracted away from some of the moments that may have otherwise been comedic because the whole time I'm like I don't like Bill Murray being mean there's just something that just does not quite seem right about it and it just doesn't really work with what I usually envision his character to be you did have a pretty good supporting cast though one of my favorite appearances was definitely Carol Kane Carol Kane is a great character actress she's always been good at that role and with her playing the uh, the ghost of Christmas present I thought that she did a very very good job and definitely fulfilled the um filled the 
you know, fulfilled the era, fulfilled what that role was supposed to be. I was able to add her physical comedy elements and her voice. Every time you hear her voice, you're like, oh, that's Carol Kane. And she always does a very good job with it. So I was actually very, very happy with that performance. I will say, though, one of my favorite one of my favorite characters in the movie, who I think deserved a little bit more screen time, was the performance by Bobcat Goldthway. I, I thought that his whole... I just love his voice. And every time I hear it, I almost were reminded, wait a minute, he played one of the little sidekicks in, in the movie Hercules, in the animated film Hercules, uh, to Hades. He was one of the little sidekicks. I don't know. I think it looks kind of dashing. I can't do Bobcat Goldthway impersonation, but he uh, is hilarious, and I love his voice. Voice. And I love the character that he was portraying. He was someone that gets fired early on in the film by Bill Murray's character. And I thought that it was interesting. So Frank Cross is the character that Bill Murray plays. Frank Cross fires his character because he finds him to be annoying. And then he just goes off on this. Just he just he Everything falls apart. His wife leaves him. Everything. And again, that's a very dark. It's a very dark Christmas movie. There's a lot of serious things that happen in the film. And so Bobcat, Bobcat Goldthwait becomes a drunk. Eventually, he comes into the studio with a shotgun trying to kill Frank Cross. And then... Oh, there's the, I will say that's one of my favorite parts is when Frank Cross comes back from his experience with the last ghost, the ghost of Christmas future. And he has that revelation, as we knew that he was going to have. And he says, oh, yes, it's still Christmas. It's still Christmas. But instead of interacting with a little child like he does in the traditional story, right, saying, what day is it? Oh, I haven't missed it. Go ahead and do this. Instead, it's him and Bobcat Goldwait who has the... <laughs> who has the shotgun, and he's so confused because he's getting hugged, he's being pushed around. That whole sequence in the physical comedy was really, really funny. I really enjoyed that part of it, but otherwise, for the other parts of the film, again, I think it was just, it was kind of, again, a battle of what it wanted to be. Was it trying to be too serious? Was it trying to be too lively? And I think that it, because of it going back and forth like that, it makes it hard for me to really love this movie or want to see this film over and over again. I don't think I'm going to be adding this to my Christmas classics, but I will say that moments like that between him and Bobcat Goldthwait I thought were really great. And of course, the ending was fantastic too, where Frank Cross goes on this long speech to the television audience about the true meaning of Christmas and all that stuff. That was, I think, Bill Murray at his best. Again, when he's being a genuine person, when he's being a real person, he does that very, very well. That's kind of his wheelhouse. Not so much when he's playing the mean TV executive that is just a complete asshat to everybody. So that, that part of it, I wasn't, I wasn't too much of a fan of. Uh, you also had a pretty, again, a very underwhelming performance, only because she's not really in the film. Um, all that much by Alfred Woodard. Again, she's a very talented actress, and she did fine for the part that she had, but the part really uh, didn't require a whole lot of screen time. And so really didn't get a whole lot from that character uh, specifically. This was uh, produced by Paramount Pictures. And it was, again, $100.3 million, 97 minutes long. So at least it is a shorter film. And so it doesn't feel as crazy as it could. I mean, if this film was over two hours long, I think that it could have really, really struggled with that. Again, having an identity crisis for that long would have just been uh, not really worth it at that time. But anyway, uh, this was directed and uh, produced by Richard Donner. Richard Donner, I believe, is the same guy who had done a at least a Superman film, right? Yeah, so he did the first Superman movie, which, by the way, I hated. So... It, it just kind of seems like this guy is probably just not my cup of tea. Uh, I guess that that's really the best way that I can explain it is I'm not a huge fan of his films. Again, I don't think this movie is as bad as Superman was. And again, remember that Superman I only hated because the ending to me was so bad that it just destroyed everything else within that film. This one has actually a really strong ending, a very good ending. And for the most part, I think it is carried by Bill Murray's performance, though it is a little bit inconsistent. But knowing that it was behind the scenes chaos, and it's interesting because also Richard Donner has some behind the scenes chaos stories too uh, at least with this working on Superman as well and so it'll be interesting to see the more I look into this that you know how specifically it, it, it holds up what is interesting is that Scrooge was actually nominated for an Oscar I never would have thought that this especially a comedy would have been nominated but when I realized it was for makeup and hairstyling I said oh, okay actually that that definitely could make sense to me and that it lost to Beetlejuice that year to me is quite fitting because I think Beetlejuice did a better job with that. So if I had to give this film a grade, I'm going to have to go C plus on this one. You know, I'm in that C plus B minus range and I might change from time to time with that depending on what's going on. But I really just do feel like there was something in here that could have been much better than what it was. I think that it could have been a lot funnier, especially if 
if, if he wasn't playing such an asset. And something, again, tells me that if you didn't have that behind-the-scenes battle over what the character should be, that you probably would have seen the film play out just a little bit better. What is also interesting is that this was the first film Bill Murray did after a four-year act, acting hiatus, essentially, because he had such huge success with Ghostbusters and was overwhelmed by that, he had to take some time off. And so that might also be a reason why it seemed a little bit inconsistent, because he had been out of it for four years. But then again, as I said, there are moments in this film where he is really in that wheelhouse that he does so well in, and I very much enjoy that performance. But those are my thoughts on this Christmas comedy cult classic movie. Again, a C plus is is that mediocre kind of grade, again, slightly above average type of grade, uh, kind of like a Jeremy Kings and, Kings and Gamers kind of grade, if you know what I mean. But with all that being said, what are your thoughts? Are you a huge fan of this film? I really do feel like this is like kind of that love or hate type of movie. Like there's going to be people that love this movie, watch it every year. Others that are going to be like, nah, not really in my cup of tea. And that's kind of where I am at this point in time. Again, no, nothing against anyone that loves it. It just, again, that inconsistency with the character really did distract, at least for me throughout the entire film. Also, music by Danny Elfman is a great job. And the cinematography was great, too. So all those technical elements worked really well. It was a well-crafted mo movie. And I think the story was actually fine, too. I do think that it could have gone through, they could have gone through it, rather, with a fine-tooth comb to really, you know, hammer out any of those issues. And most especially, um, Bill Murray just getting a more consistent performance. And again, I blame the director more so than anyone else for that, as I typically do. Though in the case of Bill Murray, maybe I should blame him because he doesn't play well with others. But what are your thoughts about this? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe. And of course, please have a merry, merry Christmas and merry and blessed Christmas with all of your families. I definitely try and will try to make some videos uh, before the new year. So I should be able to say hello to y'all before the new year. And I think we'll have one more live stream for that. It was the anyone that's wondering the saturday stream is canceled i have family coming in and so i will have our next stream on tuesday for the one man low council right here on the channel you guys are great merry 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 christmas and god bless and now for a huge shout out to all of my december patreon and subscribe star members starting off with patreon albertus magnus andrew hoyle animation commentator brian p Dion, Divex, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father, Father Damien Cook, Garrett Searles, Harold Francis, The Hunky Chunky Funky Monkey, Inflamed Wood, It's a Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jacob Juice, Jay, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Carney, Kenneth Cameo, Laura Story, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mike Jackson, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair. On to June. Orange Hat Reviews. Out of Step with Reality. Outpost Dyer. Riff Magos. Rosetta Allen. Steve Glasker. Miss Martin Muses, also known as Teresa Martin. Theodore Benden. Tina Bojand. Tina B. And the modern major general, Laura Story. Gotta give you that shout out for that one time that you were doubled up. Thank you very much for being my Patreon members. And now a huge shout out to all of my December subscribe star members we have over there with Stan4, Perpetual Punster, Robert Revo, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, Darkstar57, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., US888209 Fast, Dean Heiss, J. Rod the Beer Guru, Nevadon G. Adams, and ZK Man. Thank you all so much for being my Patreon and Subscribestar members. If you want your name shouted out at the end of every video and live stream on the main channel, please consider joining over on those platforms. You can also get access to things like exclusive giveaways of 4Ks, Blu-rays. Uh, if you want a DVD, I guess you could also get a DVD as well. Uh, digital codes. And, of course, you get to possibly join me on the channel once a month for the Chosen of Valhalla live stream and access to an exclusive podcast featuring John the Flick Pick Flickinger, where we have a lot of fun talking about movies and tons of other random things. Anyway, if you want to support these things, check out the links in the description of this video. And also, please consider joining my other channel, The OMB Report, where I talk about not just movies like I do over here, but I focus more so on politics and news and culture in that order you guys are all amazing thank you for your love and support have a wonderful day and as always god bless